Hi, in this video, I'm going to present the last topic of chapter 1, topic 1.5, Proof Techniques. Theorem Theorem is the statement that can be shown to be true under certain conditions. One of the example of theorem is like this. If x is an integer and x is odd, then x squared is odd. Equivalently, for all integers x, if x is odd, then x squared is odd. Theorem can be stated by three ways. The first one is when the theorem is stated as fact. For example, 6 is an even integer. The equation x squared plus 1 equals to 0 has no solution in real numbers. When theorem state as implication, then we get this example. For all integers x, if x is even, then x plus 1 is odd. And lastly, when we state the theorem as by implication, we can write it like this. For all integers x, x is even if and only if x is divisible by 2. There are three types of proof techniques. The first one is called the direct proof. Using the direct proof, you can express the proof of the theorem like this. For all x, if px, then qx. Then, you select an arbitrary member of the domain and substitute to the predicates and you need to show the statement ea then qa is true. To show this statement is true, first we need to assume that pa is true. And then we need to show step by step that QA is true. Then, by using the rule of universal generalization, we can state that all x if px then qx is true. Now, let us see the example. Use the direct proof to prove the following theorem. So, we have the theorem for all integers x if x is odd, then x squared is odd. So, to begin the proving, First, we let x be an odd integer. Then, we let x equals to 2n plus 1 for some integer n. For the equation x equals to 2n plus 1, you square it both sides and expand it until you get x square equals to 2 bracket 2n square plus 2n plus 1. And then, then for the expression, inside the bracket, we can denote it as m. So, we can get x square equals 2m plus 1, where m equals to 2n square plus 2n. Then, from this equation, when we compare to the original, we get x square is an odd integer. Therefore, for all integers x, if x is odd, then x square is odd. The second technique is called the indirect proof. For the indirect proof, we need to use the equivalent of statement as follows. If p then q, then we convert it to if not q, then not p. So, instead of you need to show if p then q, then we just need to show if not q, then not p is true. And then, to show if not q, then not p is true, we need to assume that the negation of q is true, then we prove that the negation of p is true. So, let us see the example. The example 2. Use the indirect proof to prove the following theorem. Let n be an integer. If n squared plus 3 is odd, then n is even. So the proof is like this. First, we let n be an odd integer, which is n equals to 2k plus 1 for some integer k. Then we square it both sides, and then we let n squared plus 3 on the left, and 2 times bracket 2k square plus 2k plus 2 on the right. And then the expression in the bracket we let it equals to t. And then once we show that n square plus 3 equals to 2t, thus n square plus 3 is an even integer. Because the 2t where t is an integer it is also known as the multiple of 2. And the third and last technique is called Proof by contradiction. Let's say we want to prove if p then q by contradiction. We first suppose that both p and not q are true. Then we use the steps from proving of if not q then not p in order to show that 
not P is true. So, by contradiction between P and not P, we complete the proof. So, I'll show you the example. Use contradiction to prove the following theorem. The theorem is, if 3n plus 2 is odd, then n is odd. To begin the proof, first we let P be the statement 3n plus 2 is odd. Then Q be the statement n is odd. Then we assume that 3n plus 2 is odd and n is even. Since we consider n is even, then we can let n equals to 2k for some integer k. Then we substitute 2k into the 3n plus 2, then we get 2 bracket 3k plus 1. 3k plus 1 is an odd integer. So by replacing it with t, then we can show that 3n plus 2 is even. And this statement is not p. And since both p and not p are true, which is this one is true and this one also true, then we have a contradiction. And by contradiction, we prove that if 3n plus 2 is odd, then n is odd. In this section, I will explain about the proof of by implications. To prove a theorem of the form of p if and only if q, we need to consider the p if and only if q equivalent to the conjunction between if p then q and if q then p. We need to prove that the implications if p then q and if q then p are true. So to do that, first we assume p is true, then we show that q is true. And also, we need to assume that q is true and show that p is true. Let me show you an example. Example 4. Prove the following theorem. An integer x is even if and only if x plus 1 is odd. So on the left side, we show if p then q is true. To begin, we assume x is even, then we show that x plus 1 is odd. To express x is even, we use x equals to 2n for some integer n. Then we plus 1 on both sides, then from here, it follows x plus 1 is an odd integer. So on the right side, we show if q then p is true. We assume that x plus 1 is odd and we prove that x is even. So we begin the expression of x plus 1 is odd with x plus 1 equals to 2m plus 1 for some integer m. And then we minus 1 on the both side and from this it follows that x is an even integer. Therefore, an integer x is even if and only if x plus 1 is odd. And the last section is the proof of equivalent statements, which means we consider more than two statements. So for this case, we only consider three statements, P, Q, and R. So to prove the statements P, Q, and R are equivalent, we need to show that if P then Q, if Q then R, and if R then P are true. Example 5. Prove the following statements are equivalent. The first statement, we have x is divisible by 6. Second statement, x is divisible by 2 and 3. And the third statement, x is an even number and x is divisible by 3. To prove these statements, we have to show first if p then q is true. Suppose that x is divisible by 6. Then let x equals to 6n for some integer n. Since x equals to 6n can also be equals to 2 times 3n and 3 times 2n, then from this it follows that x is divisible by 2 and 3. Then we need to show that if q then r is true. Suppose that x is divisible by 2 and 3. Since x is divisible by 2, x must be even integer. Hence, x is an even integer and x is divisible by 3. And the last one, we need to show that if r then p is true. Suppose that x is an even number and x is divisible by 3. Since x is an even number, then we can let x equals to 2n 
for some digit n. Then we divide 2n with 3 and let it equal to t, which is some integer. Then from 2n over 3 equals to t, we let n be the subject and also we bring n equals to 3n minus 2n. Then we substitute 3t over 2 into this, we get n equals to 3 times n minus t. Then we let n minus t as s, then we get n equals to 3s for some integer s, then we have x equals to 2n, and also equals to 2 times 3s, which is equals to 6s. This implies that x is divisible by 6. So that's all for chapter 1 and please do the tutorial 1.4 and 1.5 for more exercise. If you have any problem, just contact me. Thank you.